Okay, everybody, what happens when you take an A-level cast and put it in something with a B-movie feel? Let's check it out. Okay, everybody, today we're going all the way back to 1981 to look at a little hidden gem in the Sylvester Stallone catalog. I said I was going to review it many times before, and we're finally here. Nighthawks. Before we go any further, though, before we dig into this gem anymore, once and again, and as always, to the trailer. Is this trip business or pleasure? Pleasure, I hope. Welcome to the United States. Hamer Reinhardt, sometimes called Wolfgar. Born Frankfurt, Germany, 1946. Educated Paris and Patrice Lumumba University, Moscow. Currently self-employed. Occupation, international terrorist. You are to be indoctrinated in counter-terrorist techniques. Deke de Silva, age 35. Born and raised New York City. Honorable Discharge, U.S. Army, 1972. 52 registered kills. Occupation, cop. One man can bring the world to its knees. And only one man can stop him. Universal Pictures presents Sylvester Stallone in Nighthawks, coming in April. All right, this motion picture was directed by Bruce Malmuth. Now, not a big career, but he did some stuff that you're probably going to recognize. We're talking, he did Hard to Kill. He did Where Are All the Children? And The Man Who Wasn't There. And he did a bunch of uh, uh, TV directing, too, like, you know, the 80s Twilight Zone series and Beauty and the Beast. So he was around, did some stuff, is what it is. And by the way, this movie also had a little bit of a side director in there that was only there for a week before he got fired. But we'll get back to that later on. Okay, everybody, playing Deke De Silva, the one and only Sylvester Stallone. Let's do this. We're talking about he's been in stuff like The Lords of Flatbush and Death Race 2000 and Paradise Alley and Fist and Tango and Cash and uh, Victory and Cobra and uh, Demolition Man and uh, Cliffhanger and uh, Judge Dredd and uh, all those Expendables flags and, and uh, Get Carter and Copland and of course of course he's going to be the most remembered for being Rocky Balboa and John J. Rambo. It's just the way it goes, people. It's just the way it goes. Okay, playing Wolfgar. The one and only, the late, great Rutger fucking Howard himself. Let's do this. We're talking about he's been in amazing stuff like Lady Hawk. He's been in the Osterman Weekend. In Blind Fury, in the blood of heroes, and wanted dead or alive, and hobo with a shotgun, and Batman begins, and he was in that masterpiece that I've already reviewed, The Hitcher, and of course, he played Roy Batty himself, in one of the greatest motion pictures ever made, in all of history, we're talking Blade Runner, and he's, he's been in a shitload of other flicks too, man, but come on, Rucker Hauer, we know where he's been. We know what he did. The man was amazing. Playing Matt Fox, Billy D. Goddamn Williams. Let's go. We're talking about he has been in stuff like Mahogany and Lady Sings the Blues. And he was in The Empire Strikes Back. And he was in uh, The Final Come Down. And he was that TV movie, too, that was really big. Uh, Brian's Song. And, uh, yeah, yeah, Return of the Jedi, obviously. It pops into my head, whatever. But he was also in Fear City, which I've reviewed, and Batman. And a bunch of TV, you know, Dynasty, Mod Squad, uh, Lonesome Dove, uh, Street Time, shit like that. Whatever. He's been around, been in a million things. Billy D. Williams, still going strong today. God bless him. 
playing Hartman. Nigel Davenport. Let's go. We're talking about he's been in tons of shit, folks. I mean, he has been in stuff like Zulu Dawn and The Island of Dr. Moreau and Grease Stoke, The Legend of Tarzan and Chariots of Fire and Phase Four and uh, Mary Queen of Scots and uh, The London Connection on uh, TV to you know, Prince Regent and, and Don't Rock the Boat and Howard's Way. So big career, long career. One of those guys that you're like, he has kind of a commanding presence whenever you see him in something. You know what I'm talking about? Is what it is. Playing Minafo, the one and only Joe Spinell. Let's go. We're talking about he has been in stuff like Stay Hungry and 92 in the Shade and The Godfather, you know, one and two, I think, and Paradise Alley and Star Crash and uh, Night Shift and, and Vigilante and Married to the Mob and Big Wednesday and uh, a Maniac Cop. And, uh, the Seven Ups, which I've already viewed, which is amazing, and of course he was in Rocky, Uno, and Dos. So, come on, man, Joe Spinelli, as soon as you see him, you recognize the face. It is what it is. Plink Shaka! Persis Kampata! Let's do this. Of course she was in Star Trek The Motion Picture as Ilea. And she was in other things too, like Megaforce and uh, Conduct Unbecoming and Warrior The Lost World and Phoenix and the Warrior. And she was on TV, you know, Hunter MacGyver, popped up on Lois and Clark. Passed away really early, you know what I mean? Died of a heart attack. I think she was 49. She had been in a car accident. They had to rebuild her heart. It only lasted for so long. Died of a heart attack is what it was. Sad. And playing Irene. Lindsay Wagner. Come on, we all love us some Lindsay Wagner. Let's go. She had a huge television career, folks. Let's face reality. I mean, she was on stuff like Marcus Welby, and she was in a Night Gallery, and The Rockford Files, and Warehouse 13, and uh, uh, Scruples, and A Peaceful Kingdom, and uh, 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 Kate and Alley. And she was in TV movies, you know, tons of TV movies, like, you know, Voices of the Heart and Student Exchange, but she will always be the bionic woman. And she popped up a lot in the Six Million Dollar Man episodes, too. That's just the way she is, folks. It's Jamie Summers. You remember? Oh, come on. Everybody loved her just the way it went. Okay, everybody, I'm going to do this in 90 seconds or less. So we can be short, keep it fast, keep it entertaining, so we can get to the point we would all much rather be. The summation. You got these two cops in New York City. You got the Silva and you got Fox, Billy D and Sly. Is what it is. And they work on the decoy squad. They go out there and they dress like, you know, women and all this other kind of stuff to lure muggers into mugging them so that they can arrest them, beat their ass, and take them to jail. That kind of thing. Meanwhile, over across the pond, you got this guy, Wolfgar, terrorist for hire. Well, he blows up this department store one day. Keep an eye out, by the way. The girl behind the counter, think of the last Starfire. Okay, back on track. Anyway, he blows up this department store. Man, some of his own people are pissed. They're like, you went too far. You're a little bit out of line. You're a bit of a maniac. We're not going to pay you for this one. You're a bit of a psycho. You killed some kids. Anyway, he runs into some problems with the law. Decides he's going to run to the United States. Well, the authorities over in London decide to come over here and recruit some cops to fight the evil wolf guard because they think he's going to pick up his activities in the United States and they want a highly tuned, highly trained crack squad of police officers that can become basically anti-terrorist agents and take on Wolfgar. Of course, Sly and Billy D get trapped into those roles. They bring him in, they train him kind of reluctantly, and they set these guys out there to take on the almighty Rutger Hauer. Basically, that's the gist of the motion picture, everybody. You get it. Two cops become anti-terrorist forces, take on Roy Batty, and from there you go. It is what it is. All right, everybody, let's get down to brass taxes and knock off the sheep shit. Does Nighthawks work? Yeah, Nighthawk works. I mean, there might be a couple little things we have to mention later, but overall, it works. Let's get the regular stuff out of the way. The directing, it's solid. It works. It's not great. It's not stunningly spectacular, but it feels gritty enough for the type of movie that it is in the era that it kind of represents. We'll get to that in a moment. The writing works fine. It's an espionage action flick with a little bit of gritty street style to it. It gets the job done, no problems. 
the acting the acting is where it shines folks you got a kick-ass cast in this thing you got Rucker you got Stallone you got Billy D hell even Lindsay Wagner's cool in it you got Joe Spinell come on everybody and and Davenport how could I almost forget him everybody in this thing delivers yeah some of the little buddy buddy banter moments between Stallone and Billy D kind of feel like a little bit of stage stuff but it is what it is otherwise the acting is just fine now let's get back on track to why this motion picture works the fun thing about night dogs is that it's an 80s movie 1981 actually but it really has a 70s feel it feels right at home with motion pictures of the day like the seven ups the french connection all that kind of dirty hairy it feels like it belongs in that world this is before it turned into the cheese whiz factory of the 80s where if you're going to fight terrorists you do it in a movie like this and then later on it became like invasion usa with chuck norris you get what i'm saying it's one of those things this was a more 70s stylized motion picture than an 80s stylized motion picture i mean everything in it screams of almost a b grindhouse movie actually it's gritty it's dirty the soundtrack and the score is completely too loud in some areas and it's just a da -da -da -da, over the top type of shit it is what it is and it has that feel when you're watching Stallone and Billy Dee Williams walk around New York City it's the New York City you kind of remember from that period in time it's dark it's dirty it's grimy half of it looks like it's abandoned and smashed to shit you know the fun old days it is what it is it has that 70s authenticity to it and that helps this movie out 100 percent now with any movie the hero can't be a hero unless he's got a great awesome baddie to work against and let's face reality as much as we all love Rooker Howard, he was at his best when he was at his worst. When he was being a bad guy, he just nailed it out the park. Yeah, he was great fucking Lady Hawk. Yeah, he was cool and wanted to dead or alive. But, come on, The Hitcher, Blade Runner, even this, when Rooker was being a bad guy, Rooker was being the guy and there's no doubt about it that he delivers in this too maybe not on the same level of performance skill that he did in some of the other ones but it's still him he still shines through he still works amazing he still comes across great it's Rucker Hauer that's all you need to know and one more thing too in the beginning of the motion picture he doesn't really look like himself because you know he's supposed to have a a cosmetic surgery to hide his face and he turns into Rucker Hauer and for the first part of the movie he looks kind of different I'm going to say, the makeup job they did on him to make him look different than his normal self actually looked pretty damn good, I might add. So, he looks different, similar, but it doesn't scream of prosthetics. It doesn't scream of being super goofy. It, it, it works for the motion picture, and that, that helped. Now, are there any negatives to this motion picture? There are, but I wouldn't call them really negatives. This movie was plagued a bit by production problems. I mean, this thing had a rocky start from the beginning, the conception, the put together, the filming, everything. There was another director, Gary Nelson, who actually went on to do things like, you know, the black hole and all that kind of shit. But he was the original director. He was about there a week and they fired his ass. And then they brought the new director in, who was trying to rein things in. It was getting kind of out of control. Sly was trying to help him with stuff. It was just one of those motion pictures. But the thing that might be a little bit sad about this motion picture is that some of the best work done by Rucker Hauer apparently never made it onto the screen in this thing. It got cut out, it got chopped down. Lindsay Wagner had more of a role in this motion picture from what I understand, but you only see her pop up like two or three little times in this motion picture, so it's not like you're getting the full effect of his at-home life and the whole thing with his wife or whatever the case might be. You're just getting her popped in a couple of moments and they really cut her down and that's kind of a shame also due to them cutting back and rescaling some of the scenes you're gonna see a few inconsistencies in places I'm not gonna give away the end of the movie but let's just say when one guy is shooting another guy like two bullets go off yet you see five holes in the guy and it feels choppy about you know one shot goes off and he's got like three holes when he turns around he's bleeding in a white shirt from three different places you're like what the fuck and that was because it was filmed way more darker way more bloodier and the studio went in and they said well we're gonna you know they chopped it down they pulled things out they 
spliced it up and kind of re-threw it back together. And there's a few scenes in the motion picture that are like that. I wish they didn't do it. It's kind of a shame. It doesn't ruin anything, but you'll spot that something was going on. All in all, in the end, Nighthawks, good ride, good flick, good 70s little action drama action, if you will, somewhat. But 70s feel, 70s vibe, made in the early 80s when they still kept that vibe going along. Great acting scenes. You wish they would have left it the way it was before they screwed with it. And I hope someday maybe they can put a version of that out there. But right now, this is what we get, and this is what we got, and you should get out there and check it out. All right, everybody, once and again, and as always, be good. Take care. Take care of a friend. Look out for family. Be kind to a stranger. And above all else, no matter what, never take any bullshit from anybody. See you soon.